Hello, this is Jeremy Zimmerman from Colorado School of Mines, and today I'm going to talk about why we use Miller indices. In the previous video, we introduced Miller indices, but it wasn't obvious why they work for any crystal system. The reason for this is that Miller indices describe the plane in a different vector space called the reciprocal space. Reciprocal space is a very important concept. It's used for describing X-ray diffraction, as well as electronic and vibronic properties of crystalline materials. Really, we use it to look at any property that describes scattering processes in a lattice. X-ray diffraction is how we measure the crystal structure, the Bravi lattice, and we can also use it to understand microscopic structure, including things like crystallite size and defects in materials. When we take a diffraction scan, it actually gives us information about a slice through reciprocal space, and we then use this reciprocal space information to understand the direct space structure. It also turns out that the math used for describing planes and crystals is much easier if we use vectors as opposed to equations for full planes. After this video, you should be able to describe the motivation for using reciprocal space, explain how a Miller index uses the reciprocal space lattice, and identify or generate a 2D reciprocal space net from a 2D direct space net. Here, I have shown two crystal structures where we've highlighted the 001 plane in both systems. One convenient way to describe a plane is using the vector perpendicular or normal to the plane. Furthermore, it must have the same vector components in both systems. It is likely not obvious how to describe this vector in both systems using direct space lattice translation vectors. In the cubic structure at left, you can see that it's just the C direction, but in the triclinic system on the right, the vector has components of all A, B, and C in it. Now let's take the triclinic cell that we had in the previous slide, and we're going to try to calculate the normal vector to the blue plane. Luckily, there's an easy way to calculate this normal vector. We know that both the A and the B direction lie in the 001 plane, so if we want a vector normal to the 001, we take the cross product of A and B. We're going to name the blue vector C star, and the length is going to be some constant K times A cross B. Similarly, a vector perpendicular to the A plane would be A star, and that equals K times B cross C, and B star equals K times C cross A. In crystallography, we set the length of each of these vectors, for example, by setting A dot A star equal to 1, and similarly, B dot B star and C dot C star will also equal 1. As a note, solid state physics typically uses A dot A star equal to 2 pi. If I take the dot product of A and A star using the middle relationship above, I will get K times A dot B cross C, which I have defined as being equal to 1. Rearranging this, I get K is equal to 1 divided by A dot B cross C. This quantity is the vector triple product, and it returns the volume of the parallel pipette defined by the three vectors. So K is equal to 1 divided by the volume. So I've written A star is equal to B cross C divided by the volume. The cross product has units of area, and when we divide that by the units of volume, you get units of inverse length, which is typically inverse nanometers in crystallography. Two important things to remember are that C star is perpendicular to the 001 plane, and the distance between the planes is 1 divided by the magnitude of C star. Also note that C star exists in reciprocal space, not direct space, so the length drawn here is not correct. I have instead drawn the length to be 1 divided by the magnitude of C star. I would like to define reciprocal space a little bit more formally. Remember that A star A equals 1, and that A star is perpendicular to both B and C, so we can write this much more concisely using this matrix. Here, A dot A star equals 1, and a dot b star equals 0. You can repeat this through the remainder of the matrix, and you get this matrix with 1s down the diagonal. This is often called the Kronecker delta matrix. Now that we have these three vectors in reciprocal space, we can use them to define a lattice in reciprocal space. And we'll define it the same way that we did for a direct space lattice, where we're going to have the magnitude of a star, magnitude of b star, magnitude of c star, and then for example, the angle between B star and C star, etc. The Miller index, which we denote as HKL in round brackets, is built from the basis components of the reciprocal space lattice. 
here, the vector r star will equal h times a star plus k times b star plus l times c star. We should compare this to the direct space direction, which we called r, which was just equal to u times a plus b times b plus w times c. This ends up greatly simplifying math when we work with planes. We can just use things like the dot product and cross product of vectors to do virtually any crystallographic calculation. Now I'd like to show you what the reciprocal net of a rectangular net would look like. We are going to simplify the 3 by 3 matrix from the last slide into a 2 by 2 matrix. Remember that A star is perpendicular to B star, and the distance between lines containing B is going to be 1 divided by the magnitude of A star, which if we work through the math from the previous slides is that the magnitude of A star is equal to 1 divided by the magnitude of A times the angle between A and B. The result are that a square lattice will simply remain a square lattice, and a rectangular lattice will remain rectangular, but the aspect ratio gets inverted. Now I'm showing the direct space lattice on the bottom left, and I'm defining the two lattice translation vectors, A and B. A star is going to be perpendicular to B, and the distance between planes is going to be the magnitude of 1 over A star. Similarly, I will define B star. Notice that B star is longer than A star. Now that we have two translation vectors, we repeat them throughout space to create a set of net or lattice points, which we define as the reciprocal net or reciprocal lattice. Now I'm going to show you the reciprocal net of the oblique net. Remember that B star is perpendicular to A, A star is perpendicular to B, and the lengths of each vector will be 1 divided by the magnitude of its direct space counterpart times the sine of the angle between the vectors we get a star and b star as shown here. The angle between them is gamma star, which in two dimensions only is going to be equal to 180 minus gamma. I want to point out now that the relationship is much more complicated when we move to three dimensions. Again, we will repeat the two translation vectors to create a reciprocal space net as shown. I'd like you to make sure you can answer the following questions. What do the Miller indices mathematically represent when describing a plane? What are the advantages or disadvantages of defining planes in terms of their normal vectors? How are direct space and reciprocal space vectors related? Finally, I'd like you to find the reciprocal net of a 2D hexagonal net and give the answer in the A star B star gamma type notation. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.